Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, here in New York City. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, if you're following this next general session out there on the World Wide Web via Syscon TV. Kathy Minter is up next, the President Americas for Cordis, and uh, probably the best opening slide we've got of the show, Continuous Business Transformation. The cloud value chain. I like the phrase cloud value chain. Yeah. Kathy, take it away. Please. Thank you very much, Jeremy. You guys, uh, everyone here okay? Hi, thank you for uh, having me here tonight. Uh, my name is Kathy Mincer. Obviously, I'm president of Cordis in the Americas, and I hope everyone is having a great cloud conference. I know uh, we are as well with the team here at Cordis. Uh, I actually woke up on Saturday morning. I live in New Jersey, and uh, I had an email in my email box to call uh, my colleague in Europe, Mark D. Simone. So if many of you are looking through perhaps the, the guides for the keynotes um, for this conference, Mark was scheduled to speak tonight. And like many of others of the colleagues uh, that were coming in, he was caught. He's an Italian citizen, but he lives in the UK. So he was caught up in the, uh, the ash from the Icelandic, uh, Icelandic volcano. So in speaking with Mark, he had asked if I would uh, be so kind as to take this slot. So I said, absolutely, I would love to. And so he has passed the, so to speak, volcanic torch to me to speak tonight. So if you know, if anyone has heard Mark speak before, he uh, is at Cordis. He's been a thought leader for many years in terms of business transformation. And obviously, his uh, experience at Cisco and other major companies like GE. So Mark is here in spirit, but uh, we'll do our best to uh, get through um, you know, our material tonight. So what are we really talking about uh, when we talk about business transformation? And really, when you talk about the cloud, it's about making your business uh, really more profitable, more efficient. What are you doing today to leverage the cloud technologies to really enable new business models, new transformational activities? Um, that's really what I want to talk about over the next you know, 20, 30 minutes, talk about some examples of companies and ways that you could really new use new business models of the cloud tonight and um, kind of look at new innovative ways to run your business. A little bit about my background. Um, I came to Cordis, actually, I started, um, I have 20 years in the enterprise software and communications industry. I started my career in the early 90s with AT&T, actually working in New Jersey. And I, I've seen a lot of evolution in terms of technology that has changed throughout the years, um, you know, in terms of, you know, things that have really evolved the way that we do business and interact business on a daily basis. When I was at AT&T, I was driving around. I had customers in northern New Jersey, and I remember actually having to find pay phones in the various, I would spot out the best pay phone locations off of the various highways, and I would always try to find actually one that was on the left-hand side of the car so that you could roll down the window and you know, obviously make your phone calls. And what was interesting to make one phone call, because at that point in my career, there was no cell phones available, so you'd have to pull up on the side of the road. January can be pretty cold uh, in New Jersey, but you'd have to dial an 800 number to get onto the sort of network to make a call. Then you'd have to, of course, there was no automatic you know, phone, so you'd have to obviously dial the number you were dialing in, then a 15-digit number calling card just to place one phone call. And you know that was not the most efficient way, but you'd also have to dial back into my Audix system, which was an on-premise space voicemail system just to pick up your messages. So, you know, it wasn't really a very efficient way of doing things, and I think now about how much easier it is with, you know, texting and my cell phone and just the mobility aspect that's taken, you know, from the early 90s. When I left AT&T, I went to Oracle in 1997. I remember my first employee meeting listening to Larry Ellison talk about the software powers the internet and the internet computer and I was sitting there, and it was a lot of, everyone said, oh my god, this is a lot of hype. And my customers at the time also said, there is no way I'm ever getting rid of my client server environment. I'm absolutely, we are going to be, um, you know, we have to ins keep our software installed. And, you know, this whole, this thin internet computer, this is all complete hype. It's never going to happen. And, you know, a couple of years later, this was in 97, a couple of years later, you know, the dot-com boom hit. And a lot of those, obviously, uh, visions became real. After Oracle, I went over to SAP in 2003. 
And there it really started, I started thinking about business processes and, and how things were being pulled together from a business value perspective. And I listened to Shai Agassi at the time, who was our CTO, and he's just talking about composite applications building on what was NetWeaver at that time, the beginnings of NetWeaver. And if you think about the cloud today and the concept of a MASH application or a composite application coming together in the cloud, that's really what SAP at that point was starting in 2003 to really embark upon. So, you know, I've seen sort of as I've seen that happen throughout my career and seen it actually all be realized, when I came to Cordis in 2008, I had the same level of excitement and actually a couple, you know, some experiences along the way to say, hey, you know, when we first started talking about the cloud, it was kind of, you know, what are you guys talking about and is this really real? And even in the 18 months I've been here, it's just been an incredible transformation in terms of how real this has become, um, at least for the customers that we talk to and most people, you know, having on their minds. So I'm very excited, obviously, about what we're doing. So what's, what do we really see as the biggest challenge for businesses today? And it's, you know, how, there's, there's enough about the infrastructure, obviously, in the data center, but it's how do you create business value for your customers and create applications that can be delivered very quickly in an agile way? And then how do you connect and orchestrate those between, obviously, your on-premise environment, which is realistically what a lot of businesses are still doing today. Um, you know, there are a lot of business process outsourcing, there is virtualization taking place, or in this movement to the cloud, but essentially there is still a large percentage of your applications and data centers and core business that's being run within on, you know, within on premise. So as you move forward, you're thinking about, okay, you can go to a private cloud because of some of the things that haven't quite been maybe evolved from security aspects or just the logistics to get from one to the other. And obviously, ultimately, can you get to a public cloud scenario? So the key is really how do you orchestrate and connect together the business processes between an on-premise and private and public? And I think that that's really a challenge that's, you've got to have technologies that are available to help orchestrate that process between the three areas. And um, you know, that's really, I think, one of the greatest challenges. And what we really see about the cloud is that this is not, um, a light switch. You can't go from that on-premise to the cloud overnight. It's not something you upgrade to. It's not a version you go to. This is a continuous process. I like to think this is the universe, and the universe obviously is always expanding. It's always changing. Everything is interrelated and connected, and that's really what we think about the cloud. So there's so many interrelated parts as this comes through. It's all about kind of the connections and the relationships, creating new communities, creating new ways and business models of doing things. So it's a continuous evolution and process, and it's going to continue to happen, but you've got to get business done today. So how can you still leverage the technology that's available with the cloud? So some of the questions we have, and this goes back to you know, what are businesses doing, you know, how do we actually um, you know, connect some of our uh, outside partners and suppliers and customers and employees? And you know, there's an example you know, in terms of a company um, that, that, let's just say an example would be a logistics provider. So you have a guy who owns his own truck and a van and he's a mover. He actually wants to create his own company where, you know, he's, he's trying to make a living, um, you know, flying loads between, let's say, New York and San Francisco. So on his own, he's really having a hard time filling loads, figuring out he'd have to schedule this all his paper, he'd have to make phone calls. However, if he can leverage cloud technology and some of the things that are available, he can link himself into a whole complete network of suppliers and logistics companies to make sure he's optimizing his load, actually taking advantage of other communities, other ways that he can leverage his building. So what it does is it makes the cloud the great equalizer. It lowers the barrier of entry for companies and individuals that are trying to get into a large-scale business. It really does actually make things um, easier for others to come in at a low entry. And this is kind of what I was saying before. Before the cloud, technology was really a barrier. Um, if you think about a company, it was kind of the, the haves and the have-nots. And the people within the company that were given access to the tools had the technology to get things done. 
Now with the cloud, what we're seeing is actually the external suppliers, partners, and customers, employee have, have access to this technology, and the paradigm has completely shifted. So now tech becomes an enabler as well as an equalizer. What we've been seeing over the last couple of years is that these cloud paradigms are really falling into industry um, paradigms. So we see actually the five industries that I've listed as kind of the top um, ones that are really enabling and kind of adopting a lot of the cloud strategies. Particularly in the telecommunications industry, which is near and dear to my heart, um, telecommunications companies, I think, can play a very critical and important role moving forward in how the cloud is going to be deployed both to small, medium-sized business and enterprises. Um, if you think about telcos traditionally dealing with a commoditization of their services, trying to move up the value chain with the cloud infrastructure and the ability to create platform as a service components for their small, medium-sized businesses, telcos can now provide, you know, because of their unique position as number one, having that last mile into a consumer's home, or from a business perspective, a long-term relationship that has included service level agreements, levels of security, as well as you know, five nines of reliability, the telecommunications carriers can actually be in a unique position to kind of ensure security around adopting new cloud strategies. So for example, um, if you were a small business, let's say a, a company, a furniture company in North Carolina, you have a store, you, you know, your core competency obviously is assembling and manufacturing furniture. You're not about running a business. So for example, you don't really want to have to hire accountants or have to put financial software, HR software, employee expenses you know, in your data center at your store. You don't, really don't have the facilities for that. A service provider, I think, could come in in a unique position to provide not only your internet access, your web hosting, but also now kind of the office in the box perspective where they could be providing, providing this service for a furniture company. Um, if you take that the next step further, they could also be creating MASH applications for this company in terms of linking together other suppliers, either overseas where they're getting um, you know, some of their material in to make their furniture. And just so happens that kind of a month later, a bunch of designers from New York go down to North Carolina, and some of them are shopping at the store, and they realize together that they, on Facebook, have a community of designers that really like this particular brand of furniture. And so they then can actually work with the furniture company together to collaborate, to link in to the furniture company and what's being delivered. The unique differentiator here is that what makes the service providers in a unique position to take advantage of this is they offer the metering and the billing capabilities that are, that are very key to doing commerce. So from a metering and billing, they can parse out and share revenue across value chains. And this not only applies to, let's say, the furniture company, but the end customer as well, who can now use metering and billing to parse out their particular purchases. They can consolidate the purchases together. So you can see an extension of not only one value chain, but extended to the next value chain and the next value chain. So I kind of think of like the pay it forward model where everybody's kind of benefiting from this. And that's really what the cloud is. It's forging new communities and linkages that weren't available before. So I kind of used to watch Survivor, and you think about kind of survival of the fittest, and you know, you have to kind of adapt to the things that get thrown your way. And absolutely, uh, the, the cloud is here. It's here to stay. And companies that are going to learn to embrace the tools that are available are going to get a competitive edge. The ones that are slower to move are going to miss out. I've been working with an insurance company right now. And they're saying, listen, I've got to get new products to market faster. I don't have time to wait for my legacy systems you know, to, to um, you know, produce this data, I need to be able to react quickly in the market. I need to get more customer intimacy, you know, get closer to understand what my customers' needs are and be reactive quicker. So you know, they're really looking for this technology to be a complete differentiator for them. And they're saying, you know what? We're going to get ahead of the game here. We're going to leapfrog our competitors and be 8 to 12 months ahead of the game. So you know, companies that are getting it are adopting it much quicker.
So, you know, what is the cloud? I think if everybody looked in this room, and you're, here you are attending the Cloud Expo, and just ha myself having attended a lot of the session, I've heard many, many different definitions of what the cloud is, and I'd be curious if anyone in this audience actually is walking away from this conference feeling a very clear definition of what is cloud computing, and what is the cloud, and what is the three-year roadmap for my business. And if anybody can answer that, send me an email, because I want to invest in your company. Um, but uh, it's very difficult to define. I mean, you can go from, is it you know, software? Is it, is it you know, business process outsourcing? Is it in infrastructure as a service? Is it virtualization? Is it BPO? Is it software as a service? You know, up the chain, business process management as a service? Um, all of these things are a definition, and I think the key is that they're all a set of technologies that come together that make what I would, my way I understand cloud computing is that it is a set of tools and technologies that are an enabler. It's a tool to enact new business models and new business processes. It's not in itself something you go to or you can purchase or you can adopt. So, I mean, that's how we view it. Um, I kind of like to think of it in an analogy or a metaphor. So, I like to cook every now and then, and uh, once in a while I watch the Food Network, and I don't know if anyone's familiar with this, but there's a show called The Iron Chef America. And on Iron Chef America, they have sort of the top chefs from around the world, and every week they come together, they face off kind of the two top chefs. And it's a competitive, they only have a certain amount of time to accomplish this, so it's very competitive, kind of a time to market issue. And each week, the guy comes up and they give the chef a secret ingredient. And the secret ingredient has got to be produced in an appetizer or an entree and a dessert. So obviously, I think watermelon was uh, one of the secret ingredients. And one would say, oh, that's going to be pretty easy to put into a dessert. But how the heck can I put that into an appetizer? And when you think about what's really interesting in the analogy I'm making is at the end of the hour when they're rushing to come up with all the new different ways they can use the secret ingredient, it's amazing the different dishes that they come out with. And I kind of think the secret ingredient is a little bit like the cloud technologies because it's about, number one, how you use the ingredient effectively in your dishes or what products you're going to go to market with, what flavor it is. There's, there's an issue in terms of time, so you don't have all the time in the world to think about it. You've got to kind of react quickly. But it's endless, the possibilities. It's not just that you can do one or two things. So, I mean, it's all about the stickiness and the customer intimacy that you can create you know, with the cloud as an enabler using you know, this as not something that you just, you know, in terms of an infrastructure or a technology, but really how can I use it to change my business and create exciting new models and frameworks and collaborative relationships with your customers. And it's all about, you know, you've heard it probably in every presentation, but it really is about time to market and cost savings and cost efficiencies in your business. It's about, you know, continuously improving that. It's about really, I mean, getting the competitive edge. So what is, for everyone here with your companies, what is your winning, you know, recipe for your business in terms of using the cloud? So thank you very much and uh, be happy to take any questions. Thank you.